beauty about filming and working in London is round every corner there's a bit of history and certainly sometimes history that even was part of your first history when you moved to London. As ever, let me explain. Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here in the very heart of London. Nice to have your company today. Yes, this soulless looking building behind me is number 12 Lower Regent Street, Piccadilly. Yes, it's a cinema now. It was back then. It in fact started out as a cinema way back in the late 20s and really was doing incredibly well. My association with this though is simply this. One day I was going for an audition to the White House Hotel, which is in Regent's Park at the top end of, of course, Regent Street. Wonderful place. And you know when you're younger, they seem really posh and big and quite frightening, don't they? Anyway, came out of the audition, walked out, was just stood there looking around, and across the road was standing none other than the carry-on legend himself, Kenneth Williams. He looked at me, I looked at him, and I said, hello, nice to meet you. He, of course, was famous for being a little bit difficult, shall we say. You know, not necessarily friendly to fans, but he was to me. He suggested, after having a brief chat, that we walk down together towards the Paris. I'd got no idea what he meant until, of course, I arrived here at 12 Lower Regent Street, Piccadilly. This was the now infamous, famous BBC Paris Studios. Now, I'd never been to a free radio recording before, so it wasn't just a first meeting a carry-on legend, but also being taken in to meet uh, so many famous people. He was recording a panel game, and I think it would have been, sorry, I haven't a clue. Honestly, can't remember. I was simply in awe of being invited in. He introduced me to all of the people, and then the audience came in. They must have wondered who this guy was that he just randomly met on the street after having an audition didn't really bother me, we're in the world of show business, as you can imagine. What's interesting to note though, that the Paris itself ran right through until 1995. And if you're a fan of all these sort of musical attachments to it, literally all major stars performed there, including one of the very last big performances of the superstar David Bowie. But the likes of Dad's Army was made there, the radio series, uh, the Navy Lark, all of those big radio comedies that we all liked and loved and still like to listen to from the 1950s and 60s. In the 70s and 80s, of course, it really was turned over to Radio 2 and those big rock concerts. Early Queen with Freddie Mercury, Jimi Hendrix, Jeff Beck, Susie Quattro, so many famous people performed here. Strange to think that when the BBC decided to relinquish it way back in 95, that they'd now built their own radio theatre inside BBC Broadcasting House, there's simply no plaque to say that of all the greats that have appeared there. Now, if you are a Beatles aficionado, as we pointed out recently, that Brian Epstein plaque outside next door, should I say, the London Palladium, is a great find. But here, the Beatles also did one of their very early performances to great acclaim, one that they thought was lost forever until someone as ever had secretly recorded the whole performance. When they arrived, naturally, there was an abundance of fans out, outside. But as their fame got bigger, they simply couldn't record here or appear here because, first of all, the stage wasn't that big and the cinema itself only held 400. A great starting block for them, but really a pivotal moment in the Beatles' history. Sadly, there's, as I say, no record of the Paris BBC studios. But for so many people, including a major film was shot here also, Any Questions or 20 Questions as it was titled, and it was hosted by Richard Dimbleby. That was the fame of this particular studio. So as ever, if you're out and about or you're coming over to London and you want to look up some of these historical places that are not necessarily on the tourist trap, do make a note. It's definitely one not to be missed. And more importantly, see if you can soak up the atmosphere of all the many stars that took to the stage at the now defunct BBC Paris Studios. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.